Keep watching and we'll take you on a virtual visit to a labyrinth of crazy white rock formations, simply known as White Rocks, which is part of the Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument in South Central Utah. White Rocks offer so many wild and bizarre landscapes, it's kind of like if Dr. Seuss met Jerry Garcia on an episode of The Twilight Zone. If you can imagine joining all those concepts into one, then you might be able to visualize White Rocks, or just go there and you'll see the visions all on your own. With that said, White Rocks really is a special place. It's also seldom visited, probably because it's difficult to find the various places and it requires a lot of hiking. White Rocks is very similar to Coyote Buttes with its own collection of colorful and crazy rock formations. And it's not White Pocket. But ironically, you can see both places from White Rocks. Yes, both are about 15 miles away and inside Vermilion Cliffs National Monument. White Rocks is in Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument. Like our other tours, we'll show you what there is to see so that you can figure out if you want to go there on your own or hire a tour guide to lead the way. Or you can simply sit back and take our tour virtually to enjoy this very distinctive place without getting lost or even sunburned. Because we found so many unusual rock formations at White Rocks and want to share as much as we can, this tour is a bit longer than usual, about 40 minutes. Keep watching it though, because there's always something different around every corner, and you don't want to miss out. By road, White Rocks is easy to get to, but that's where the simplicity ends. To see many of the sites in White Rocks, you'll have to do some hiking and know where to go. Hopefully, you've had a chance to watch our overview video tour of the Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument which I'll just call the monument from now on. If you haven't seen it, we recommend that you do so that you'll have some background about the history, geology, geography, and other info about the area, as well as the monument itself. Look it up by using either the link in the video or in the comments, or just search for it on YouTube. Hiking in the White Rocks area is the only way to really see some of its spectacular sights. After watching this video, you'll have an idea of what there is to see, and depending on what strikes your fancy, the hike can be easy or it can be long and strenuous, and some of the sights are difficult to find. There are no developed trails in the White Rocks area, only social trails. Some were created by previous hikers, but some are from the cattle that openly graze in this area. This is why I used the word labyrinth earlier. It is easy to get lost, and this is why you need to know where you're going before you get there. A lot of what makes the White Rocks area so special are the very delicate rock formations that can easily be damaged by hiking boots. Be careful to always hike on well-defined trails or down in the washes or even on canyon rims. There's also a lot of what's called cryptobiotic soil crust all over the place. It's important that you recognize what it looks like and then don't disturb it. You're looking at a field of what we call crypto crust right now. If you find some in your path, simply take a detour around it like you see me doing by staying in a wash. The reason this is so important is that the soil crust is a living organism that grows very slowly. It is a valuable member of the desert ecosystem as it stabilizes the otherwise moving sand and dirt, allowing other plants to get established. What you're looking at took hundreds of years to create and one step onto it will kill it. The features you'll find in the White Rocks area varies from hoodoos or toadstools to very fine and intricate rock formations and patterns. It's Mother Nature at her artistic best. Plus, there's a few surprises. White Rocks is very remote. You might get a cell phone signal, you might not. 
When you come to explore this area, come prepared with supplies and lots of water. It's also very easy to get lost in this vast area. So bring something to navigate with, preferably a GPS app on your phone. I'll talk more about that later. In doing our research of this area for this video, we spent four full days of exploring and we still didn't see it all. After seeing some of those places on this tour, you might consider hiring a tour guide who knows the area and can get you to these sites directly rather than you hunting around for them. I'll talk about that later too. All right, let's get started with how to get there and why White Rocks is here. Using the BLM map of the monument, you can see that White Rocks is located close to Highway 89, just north of the small hamlet of Church Wells, not far from the town of Big Water, where one of the monument's visitor centers is located. Heading north off of Highway 89, on the east side of Church Wells, BLM Road 435, which is dirt, is used to reach the two trailheads of White Rocks. The distance from 89 to the two trailheads is under three miles. The trailheads are close to each other, just a few hundred feet apart. The first one is located just past and around a cattle corral, and the other is at the end of Road 435. The White Rocks area is broken down into three regions. They are the area around Zebra Hoodoo on the northwest side, White Valley, which is in the center, and Sidestep Canyon, which is on the east side and butts up against the Waweep Wash drainage. Our tour is broken down into exploring these three regions. You'll see where they are roughly on a map, but it's impossible to explain exactly how to hike there. However, in this video, we'll point out where the various sites are roughly located. One landmark to remember when hiking around White Rocks is this tall feature called Chimney Rock. A hike encompassing all three regions of White Rocks consists basically of making a big clockwise orbit around Chimney Rock. It's a good point of reference to keep looking at throughout your hike. Unless, of course, you're inside of one of the canyons. It's called White Rocks because, well, most of the rock formations and terrain is white. What you'll mostly see is what geologists call the Entrada Sandstone Formation. It formed during the late Jurassic period and, in this area, initially consisted of desert sands similar to the region's well-known Navajo Sandstone. However, unlike the orange-colored Navajo Sandstone, which got its coloring from oxidized iron, a.k.a. rust. Whatever colorful minerals may have been in the Entrada sandstone has either been leached out or something else happened. There's also shades of yellow and brown colors found throughout white rocks. The solid sandstone was formed with time and pressure after being buried by other rock formations above it. Those top layers slowly eroded away, exposing the Entrada. This is what we see today. Over the past few tens or maybe 100,000 years, just recently in geologic time, the wind and water has eroded the sandstone and created the delicate features that we all want to see. There's also a variety of mudstone material intermingled with the sandstone. That material is what created these flowing or dripping wax looking formations that you'll see all around the White Rocks area. In Southern Utah, this effect is something we've only seen in the Entrada Formation. White Rocks is located on the very southern edge of the Kaparowitz Plateau. Since you've watched the video about the monument, you know all about this plateau. What's interesting is that the Entrada sandstone layer can be found at the base and on all sides of the Kaparowitz Plateau. This includes below Bryce Canyon National Park near the town of Tropic, south of the town of Escalani, 
where Cedar Wash Arch is located, at the 20 Mile Wash Dinosaur Track Site, and along the edge of Southern Lake Powell. Notice how these rock layers all look somewhat similar. Plus, all those hoodoos and toadstools formed in the entrada. Toadstool creation, which is a result of an erosional process, was certainly helped by the entrada's overlaying formation here, seen as the darker colored and hard packed Dakota formation. It's what put the hats on all the toadstools. Incidentally, geologists now call this the Naturita Formation, as the Dakota is a very widespread formation throughout North America with a lot of localized rock varieties, the Naturita being one of them. Also, by the way, the White Rocks area probably has the highest collection of toadstools anywhere, with probably over a hundred of them scattered around here. Okay, I'll stop boring you with the geology stuff. Because it's difficult to navigate within the White Rocks area and then find all of its features, we've partnered with a local tour guide company out of the nearby town of Kanab and helped them design a tour that can be custom modified to fit both your personal interests and physical hiking abilities. Whether you want to dash around quickly and see as much as you can, or maybe you enjoy photography and would like to go slow to spend time at the different places to capture that perfect shot, the tour guides will accommodate you. The tour guide company is called Grand Circle Tours, and their website is grandcircletours.net. Visit their website, look for the White Rocks Tour, and contact them to book it. You're looking at their webpage explaining details of the tour. If you're going to forge ahead and explore White Rocks on your own, I strongly recommend purchasing a subscription to the Gaia GPS app. Be aware that although it does show a few of the trails through White Rocks, I found some of them to be inaccurate. This is another reason to be familiar with the area before you go and not rely solely on technology. But even with these errors, it's very helpful to see the terrain in relation to your GPS location. Plus, using Gaia GPS, you can plan out your trip on your desktop computer before you go, then see your plots and notes on your phone. Go to our website blog at backroadswest.com, then select blog and look up our post about White Rocks. It will include an ad for Gaia GPS that gives you a discount if you purchase it through our website. You can also find a discount link in the video description below. For now though, keep watching because you're booked on this virtual tour of White Rocks, which starts right now. We'll point out all the things to see along the way. Ready? Here we go.
And that wraps up our tour of the White Rocks area. We think you'll agree that White Rocks has some very unique features and unbelievable landscapes with something different around every corner. Don't forget to visit our website and blog for more information about White Rocks. Plus, if you'd like to see this place for yourself without getting lost or wasting your valuable time, you should really consider hiring a tour guide from Grand Circle Tours. They're experts in this area. And if you do hike with Grand Circle Tours, be sure to ask your guide questions as you go. They can tell you many stories and facts about this and the surrounding area, as they've lived in this area for many years. Look them up at grandcircletours.net. Heck, if you have a few days to spend in the area, why not book another tour to see something completely different that's just a few miles away? We hope you enjoyed our virtual tour of the National Monument's fascinating White Rocks area. Subscribe to our channel and be on the lookout for future tours to other places in the monument. Until then, we bid you Happy exploring!